May the 24th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at the model that we've been using for tracking the coronal mass ejections. In this video, I want to go through two models because this one is handling the first wave and uh, the other one is handling the one that's coming in uh, on the 26th. Now, what you're looking at here will be tomorrow and it's going to be very close to around 1 p.m. Central Time. That the, would be the center of an eight-hour window. So that's going to put you at 2 p.m. on the East Coast. Again, the center point of the window. And uh, you, over on the West Coast, you're going to be at about 12, 10 to 11 a.m. So that would be the impact time. Now, what does that tell you if you think about it? Why is that important? Other than, you know, if you're watching uh, earthquake monitors and things like that. A lot of people, and if you look in the comments, guys, suffer from vertigo and other things during these events, this increase in plasma. And what that's what's in these explosions. The, sur the surface of the sun is exploded out. And if it's earth-facing, like these are, then you have a wall of plasma energy. And what I've got it paused right here. Uh, just before impact, and it looks like a brick wall impact for the Earth. Notice this, we're cruising along, plasma density, centimeters cubed, and it skyrockets straight up. That's the most deadly because a slower slope or um, in a, an event like this where it's rising more gently doesn't have the impact. It still can cause quakes and volcanic activity, but uh, when you see this straight line up like that, it's going to be a very sudden impact. So around 1,700 hours UTC time, that would be um, about 5 p.m. UTC. So you just take five hours from that, and you're going to have central time here in the U.S., and so you can work it out like that. Now, the Earth in radial velocity here will also experience a climb in the uh, solar wind speed, so that's going to add to the impact somewhat. And I just want to play this through. We'll let it come back. And so you've got an event that's going to last in, from the 25th in the just afternoon here in, in the U.S. And you've got a slow sloping decline. Notice as we're coming up onto the 25th tomorrow afternoon there. And then going all the way into the 27th, there's going to be pressure from that. That tells you how thick this cloud of uh, plasma is. Check that out. Now, another thing. If you pay pay attention and realize the times that I gave you, around noon to 11 to noon to 2 p.m., that tells you that this nation, this side of the planet, will be sun-facing. Now, if it, were, uh, if it were to impact at night when we're on the back side of the Earth, then you would have less damage on this side. But again, you're going to have high UV radiation coming in. Watch your... Uh, I think AccuWeather gives you a daily UV rating. You go in there and look in your area. But watch that for, you know, getting outdoors and things like that. And like I said, people with vertigo and other problems, dizziness and headaches, uh, suffer from this. And it, it's a uh, known fact. So you're just, the more you can be indoors, the better off you're going to be. Now you're looking at the Enlil. What a name, right? One of the uh, Anunnaki gods the Enlil solar wind speed different model now if you got the same setup the sun is in the center and to the right in the yellow dot is our planet the squares indicate different satellites the orange is mercury the green is venus and the red circle here is mars now what's happening and we've seen it before as mercury comes around and gets closer to the sun or whatever side mercury is on the sun you have seems to have more activity and that, i believe that's because it's almost like a comet. We did a video where they picked up the tail of Mercury because it moves so fast. But uh, that is an opposite polarity, and it triggers these events. The sunspot is more than likely reacting that. If you look in the orange dot here, and what we were seeing yesterday, everything was fired out both sides. That has something to do with it. We also had a sun-diving comet earlier, and that always can energize sections on the sun. Now, again, we'll look at that endpoint impact time getting very close there, um, right outside of the Earth's shields. And that's 26 on the 26 at uh, oh, 0600 hours. So you've got a window where people are going to start feeling it, not the direct impact, starting uh, at midnight, Tuesday night. 
up and through the, uh, the morning and the early hours of the morning. So let me play this through. There. So right now the models are working very good together. Sometimes that doesn't happen. The first model got the first four or five uh, different waves, and this one's got the second one. Now once these passed, you may see some new models because there, there were other flares, just not this strong. Now, let's take a look at a different model, and this actually shows via the satellite readings that surround our planet the plasma cloud itself. So what we're looking at in the very center is a circle with a white side and a black side. The white side represents the sun facing side. So the sun is to the left of the earth and you can tell by the bending back of the plasma that's bouncing off the earth's magnetic field the direction of the sun. That's where the energy is coming from. And I want to point out something um, I'm going to pull it just a little closer. Now I have it paused. I'm going to play it forward but first I want to point out something. You can see these rings are kind of lightly colored, but that's the Earth's shields that we talk about quite a bit. And they, they're very weak during grand solar minimum, but when you have a continuation of solar flares and coronal mass ejections, they're taking that energy. It, of course, it goes into the ground, earthquakes and volcanoes, but it also strength, uh, strengthens the shield itself. It's like more power to an electric motor. The le actual electromagnetic field around that motor will expand. So it's kind of, a, again, a feedback situation. But right in the top of this, you can see a purple V that dives into and in between the magnetic shields. This is called a cusp, C-U-S-P, cusp. And that allows this energy to penetrate into the Earth's shields and into the ground. And they will, as they hit the atmosphere, they will, it will cause a spraying effect as they start breaking apart and it covers a wide area. Now before I play this I want to point out one other thing. I talk about ground currents and when the magnetic field lines that your compass works off of penetrate the ground they create a secondary current called ground currents and CERN happens to be built in a very um, active area as far as ground currents. So during the last few years before they shut down and they were reaching peak luminosity they you could tell when we were getting these flares in, and that ground field that's underground, that electromagnetic field traveling through the surface, they would ramp up their 17-mile uh, wild collider, the Hadron Collider, and they were taking advantage of that energy. You understand what I'm saying? Because this circle is a big um, coil. That's how you make motors work and increase or decrease voltage. But that, I've seen it many times and we talked about it, when you get a lot of energy hitting here and you got any kind of ground effect on the magnetic field, we've seen these white areas in the shields and very closely here collapse all the way to the our upper atmosphere. But I want to play this forward. One other thing, let me say this. This outer edge, of this dark blue area where the plasma is, is the average standoff point. And it is usually at about 12 right there. Excuse my drawing. Right there, 10, 11, 12. And that's where it's at now. But watch what happens today as we start getting the incoming. Let me play this forward. Again, watch the increase of the uh, magnetic waves and the solar density coming from the sun. This is a measure of density. Notice it's starting, you're getting darker blue waves. Watch the bending of the shields themselves. And watch the opening here of the cusp, that direct energy applied to the upper atmosphere, and it goes straight into the ground through you, through your plants. And we're going through the day here. That's building up ahead of these flares. There were some smaller ones before, it, but this is what we're starting to see now. Light blue, as it increases, you're going to see the shields try to push back out. Notice your right here, your standoff point at 12 is going to be pushed back. And all of that pressure is felt by our planet. Get that. Just pulse after pulse now. And tomorrow as these things start coming in, you're going to see this really bend back and throw off a real, uh, a very large tail of, a tail of plasma behind. Now let's back up and look at some satellites that look directly at our sun and give us uh, Earth-facing perspectives of what's coming. You probably noticed in the last few frames that we had a sun-diving comet that was more than likely larger than our planet, 
slime into the bottom of the sun. Just watch it coming. Here it is right there. See that? The reason I say that it's more than likely larger than our planet is because the sun is not represented by the blue line. It's the white circle. That's the size of the sun. And so there's a, it would take 109 of our planets, if you laid them across the surface of the face facing us, to reach across the uh, sun again. Look at the size. And we've seen them larger than that. You, and uh, what you're looking at here, starting out, the first flare is going to come up on the right. That's the one we're going to feel tomorrow. Here is the one we're going to feel on the 26th. And, and by the way, the top right corner, a couple of days ago, this was aligned with the sun. And this is the Pleiades, the seven sisters, the star cluster. And at that point, there was a, con a conjunction between the sun and the Pleiades. Again, explosions on both sides, and if you look as we're, we're in the 23rd here, now we're going to go into the 24th, you're still getting lighter activity, not as large, and there goes your comet, 24th, last frame. Now, remember, these models sometimes cannot track all of the CMEs at one time. They're getting the information in. It's a lot to deal with, but to starting tomorrow and then going through Tuesday into, into excuse me, going into Wednesday and then possibly into Thursday, you're going to have the effects of this on our planet, if it, whether it's vertigo, headaches, uh, whatever it is, plus the extra UV radiation that penetrates into those cusps I was uh, showing you there. But guys, we're watching this. We will update it tomorrow, and we'll watch the different satellites. And there are actually two. Discover is one of them, and it will indicate and give us about a 45-minute uh, heads up because... It crosses the satellite before it gets to our planet. It's going to be interesting. Watch again if you live in a heavy um, fault zone area, earthquake or, or volcanic area. Then pay attention as these two waves move over our planet, guys. It's a heads up. Oh, by the way, let me say this. I don't usually do it, but you guys subscribe for the updates. Just push a button, and then uh, that subscribes you. Then, if you want the notifications, you click the bell and you'll go to all notifications but i appreciate it guys it's a heads up be safe